When you watch a speedrun, you know, most people usually think one thing. Dang, the guy who's playing is really good. And, well, yes, the person's correct. Um, it never would have been a possible with, uh, without the other much less represented side of speedrunning. Uh, so today, I'm just going to ramble about routing um, to show you guys how much routing goes into, this into the route uh, that the speedrun is using. Um, so to start, I'd like to give an analogy, okay? Uh, you know how in like high school and college, uh, you, you know, you're preparing your future, you know, for when your parents kick you out, okay? Just like um, school, just like school, routing is preparing you for runs. So you're not just sitting there, you know, at GDQ talking about how you forgot the route. I think your socks are so awesome. You know what? Not. I don't even, I have no idea where I'm going. I will We're be just charging him. That's the second time we've had to run a say, I will be totally honest. I no, have no, no idea what is. like, number one thing you want to hear, runner. <laughs> um, now that, okay, so now that we have a clear picture, um, let me give some examples, you know, where glitch hunters, tassers, and just other people behind the scenes have absolutely carried the speedrun. You know, the most infamous example of this is Mario 64. Because uh, b before BLJs, you know, speedrunners had to play the game all the way through until they reached 70 stars. And then and only then could they, you know, do their 1v1 with Bowser. Um, but some guy completely unrelated to speedrunning in the 90s just found out, you know, that you could BLJ up the stairs and skip the 70 star requirement. You know, he posted it in his, like, tips and tricks guide uh, at the, and sent it to the Scholastic Book Fair and called it a day. But... Uh, some speedrunners found it, you know, and the rest is history, okay? Like, this random guy is one of the reasons that Mario 64 can be beaten in less time than it takes for you to finish watching this YouTube video. Um, that's pretty crazy, but if this random dude didn't discover uh, this this trick, um, it could have been much different. You know, maybe Mario 64 would have never picked up pace as fast as it did. Um, or maybe w the history would be the exact same, who knows? Um, also, by the way, don't quote me, I'm pretty sure multiple people found BLJing on their own, so the history probably wouldn't have changed. Um, I was just picking the funniest story, because I remember seeing like a picture in a magazine um, that was showing off BLJ, and being like, well, you can BLJ up the stairs and skip it. So, yeah, that's that's where that's coming from. Uh, please don't. You know, feel free to let me know how wrong I am in the comments. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. Um, another example of this has got to be the Legend of Zelda series. Like, the route basically went from, like, two hours to, as of today, being around 20 minutes. You know, like, I I saw, actually, I was actually lucky enough as a 12-year-old, little 12-year-old, just getting into speedrunning to witness this. So, for reference, Jesus, I'm 17 years old now. Um, now, okay, I could be, again, once again, spreading misinformation uh, online because, you know... I'm completely recalling this from memory. Okay, so I might not be 100% accurate. Um, but Glitch Hunters first discovered of a trick known as Bullet Time Bounce. You know, by using a shield, pulling out your bow, slowing the game down. Uh, and right as you hit a Bobakin, you just get blown. No idea how it works, but, you know, it's pretty easy to just do that. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty unpredictable at first. You know, not really useful for speedruns, aside from maybe like a Hail Mary attempt to save a run. Um until a magical thing uh, known as a setup became common. Um, the biggest one I think most people can recall was the uh, plateau, like going from straight from the Great, great Plateau uh, to Ganon's Castle right after you get the... Uh, what is that called? It's like the glider. Yeah, uh, this, this literally saved like an entire hour of horse riding simulator and was arguably the biggest time save in the entire game. All thanks to glitch hunters and routers, okay, who spent, you know, like every neuron they uh, ever have owned coming up with these crazy setups of, you know, flip, swing, backflip, sw flip, swing. Uh, and, you know, like, after that, I just, <laughs> after that point, after that, uh, that specific setup, I don't really remember what happened. Um, pretty sure, like, I don't know, like big jump. And now everyone's using, like, bomb launch and crazy, like, stasis bomb manipulation grab fling. I don't know anymore i i was there at the start and that's about it um aside from bomb launching shout out to whoever came up with bomb launching i love that trick saved me hours of legend of zelda i love you man so the final game third game i'd like to talk about um 
As an example is Battletoads. Okay, no, don't click off this video, please hear me out. Uh, Battletoads, it's one of my favorite arcade classics. Uh, and in my opinion, it really represents an era of gaming. Uh, you know, absurdly hard games uh, meant to steal every quarter you've ever owned just to get to the second stage of the level of the game. Uh, now, in smaller speedruns, you know, without many runners, most of the time gl the glitch hunters will be and the routers will be the runners themselves. And this is definitely the main case in Battletoads, as one guy known as Patrick P.J. De Caesar, De Caesar? I don't know how to spell it. You can see it on screen, maybe. Uh, has held the record for Battletoads for a whole 10 years now. Uh, now, it's obviously not the most complex video or wild crazy route ever, as it's a side scrolling beat em up. Uh, but the strategies have lasted this long, you know, a simple running cake spam, basically. Uh, it's lasted 10 years now. Now, well, it, it might f sound like I'm making fun of the run by just saying simple kick spam, uh, but I just wanted to mention that uh, sometimes a simple route is a better route. And in this case, like, like you can't really combo or anything in this game. This game is a stupid arcade game for the 90s, okay? So I, I'd like to just say, like, it depends on the game. Sometimes simpler is better, and sometimes it's Legend of Zelda, okay? But I lo also Loki wanted to mention this game in the hopes that someone more infinitely more talented than me will beat this run. Um, so that's another reason I'm bringing it up. But you know, okay. So basically, I sat back, I racked my brain for a minute. And after brainstorming, I came up with a basic route, uh, or a basic plan, to route any game you might speedrun ever. Um, so, it's so simple, anyone can follow it. You know, I'll even follow along with you guys, and give you an example as I explain it. Um, so, you know, okay, so the game is uh, called the Haunted Mansion, and the room in particular is the Conservatory Room. It was an individual level run. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple, basic room, you know, um... And so, yeah, let's get into this. Uh, step one of three is called play. Okay, so before you do any running, glitch hunting, anything relating to speed running, just simply play through the game, like entirely. Um, make, make sure to make notes on it if you find any jank or like glitches or anything like that. Um, playing through a game like this is good for, well, two reasons. Um, it gets you used to the game's mechanics, but also your objectives and where they are. Along with maybe accidentally discovering glitches along the way, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I played through the level uh, of Conservatory, you know, and really just sat back and understood its objective. Um, you need to get this switch on the second floor by using books and platforms. Uh, and while you're doing this, ghosts will attack you, making it more difficult to traverse through. That's the basic um, explanation um, to the level. And so step two now uh, is called Glitch Hunt. Now, now that you understand the game and its objectives, uh, try and come up with any glitches you, you can find, you know, whether it be movement exploits, out of bounds, a dumb glitch that literally does nothing. Uh, document everything that might be useful later on. Um, so I'm gonna be 100% honest here, I already knew a lot of the glitches about Haunted Mansion when I came into this uh, conservatory individual level root, uh, rooting. Um, but, because most people found them previously, but, and they were considered just too difficult for runs, like this one where you like launch yourself on a book, I forgot what it's called, but, but a couple days prior to rooting conservatory room, I actually realized that when you're hit by ghosts, you keep your upwards and downwards momentum for a split second, like, like if, if you walk up a platform even, um, you'll keep them, you'll like stay hover in the air for a minute. So I nicknamed this extended jump and you'd be, uh, cause you jump extremely far. So extended jump. Uh, so I tried using it to jump from one platform to the final platform. Um, and that worked. So all that was left was to combine it into a root. And so, yeah, which guess what step three is guys, uh, root. <laughs> Uh, so you want to strip the game down to its core objective, okay? Really, like, so like, like, really think about what the real goal of the run is. Uh, what is considered completion? Um, so think about it like this: like a main quest, um, side quests. You know, they're you being used to build up to what is the complete. Um, what, uh, side quests are basically used to build up to complete to the, the main quest. Okay, so like. Side quests aren't 100% essential, but they're like on the way there, you know? What side quest? Think about like what side quests can you skip? What of those side quests aren't needed? You know, if that makes sense? It probably doesn't, but 
So for my run, in my analogy, uh, the main quest would be flipping the lever on the top of conservatory room to end the room, okay? The side quests, in quotation, would be all the platforming that came before it, um, and skipping some of the platforming uh, is like skipping some of the side quests. Uh, you're still completing the main objective, and that's the only goal. Like, theoretically, you could probably just, if you glitched up there, you could probably just flip the switch immediately. Uh, but you can't do that because what's limiting you is not having some of the side quests complete. You know, I don't know if that made sense, but I tried. Okay, so this is my basic guide to rooting any speedrun, summarized in three steps. You know, play, glitch, hunt, and root. <sighs> so, um, yeah. Hope this video helped you appreciate uh, more of speedrunning and the work that just goes unnoticed by the masses. The amount of hours that go into making a route that isn't... Uh, the amount of hours that go into a route is nearly equivalent to the amount of time it takes to just do the speedrun. Um, so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed my once every three years upload. Uh, see you in 2027. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see.